Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 52. As always, thanks for subscribing, for tuning in, and for all the great feedback. It is appreciated. In today's Tip of the Day, I'm going to go over some of the options that you have available to you when you are rendering your movies. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to go to export movie. When you go to export a movie out of Source Filmmaker, you can have what is often what most people would consider to be a fairly bewildering array of options. And I want to go over some of these, and I want to probably spend at least one tip of the day on some of these elements. Uh, so the first one I want to talk about today is exporting, whether you're going to export a movie or an image sequence. Exporting a sound, well, you can just export the soundtrack if you like. But uh, when you export a movie, what you're doing is you're telling Source Filmmaker, I want you to do all of the work. I want you to, to not only do the rendering, I want you to uh, render it down to... Uh, an MP4 or an AVI or an MOV file, which is a QuickTime uh, uh, file. Now that works really well for a lot of people because if you don't have any additional software to do any post-processing or if you're not familiar with how to use some of this other stuff, that's a great option. It'll generate the movie and it'll be pretty good quality. Um, if you want to really take it to the next level, a lot of people will suggest that instead of rendering a movie that you rem render an image sequence, which instead of actually rendering the film as a movie file that you can just play, it'll actually render one image file per frame. And as you can imagine, that is a lot of image files for a longer film. I mean, when you're dealing with 24 or 30 frames per second films, that gets pretty sizable pretty quickly. So in general, you're going to want to make sure that your output path, wherever that is, uh, has enough space, regardless of whether you're exporting movies or uh, image sequences. But if you if you want to export an image sequence, you've got to have software to process the film afterwards to actually take the image sequence and turn it into a movie. And that's something I'll tell you how to do in another tip of the day. Um, I use Virtual Dub. Some people use other software like After Effects and uh, um, other uh, Vegas, I think. But, um, you know, whatever you like is fine. The uh, um, Getting back to exporting movies, though, we'll, we'll cover exporting image sequences a little bit later. You have three formats at your command, MP4, MOV, and AVI. Um, and in general... Uh, you want to leave these at the defaults unless you know what you're doing. Uh, experiment with these, as I always say, experiment. Uh, but MP4 is a great format uh, for exporting out of Source Filmmaker. Uh, the resolution, uh, generally, I would recommend leaving it at the default. Here's one that often uh, uh, catches people off guard. Sequence, selected shots, or custom. This is uh, uh, one that sometimes if you just say sequence, that'll export all of the, um, the whole thing, the, everything that you've got, all of the, all of the shots in your, in, your, in your film. If you say selected shots, it'll only export the actual shots that you have selected um, in, in here. So if I had more than one shot, let me go ahead and blade this. If I had, one sh if I had just one shot selected and I said export uh, movie and yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll save it. Uh, and I said selected shots. Well, it would only export the second shot here. So you want to make sure if you want to export the whole thing, you select sequence. Um, and if you want to just export a specific range, like say you want to show people a work in progress or you want to, uh, you know, just give people a little teaser or something like that. Well, you can say custom and just pick a custom range of seconds. And that's fine, too. Uh, in here is where you're going to get into, if you click more options, you're going to find a bunch of cool stuff. If you want to render quick and dirty films without having to spend hours waiting for it to render, uncheck progressive refinement and ambient occlusion here in the render settings, uh, and that will eliminate a lot of the overhead. However, it will produce relatively poor looking films, but they will still be showing what's going on. It's just the lighting won't work. There won't be any shadows. The depth of field will look bad. They're, they're, you know, it, it won't look great, but if you're just trying to show people, hey, this is what I'm working on, it's a great way to generate work in progress because you can render them pretty quickly. If you turn on progressive refinement, uh, and and override the camera settings. And this is another thing. If you if you if you say uh, use camera settings, then all of these settings will come from each camera's settings in each shot. And if you want to override it, it will override it for all of the camera settings. So if you have custom depth of field or you're doing something funky in one shot but not in another, if you override it here, that might not be what you want. So you're going to want to approach that carefully. If you're, I personally just try to set all of my rendering settings in my cameras so I don't have to mess with this and just say use camera settings. But your mileage may vary. Um, 
and the ambient occlusion and so forth. If you've been using Source Filmmaker at all for any length of time, you've already seen this in the right-click menu from the viewport, um, and that's what allows you to change the way that things look so you can render more quickly while you're editing. Uh, and this provides similar effects to when you're actually exporting a movie. Uh, draw entities. This is one where if you just want to, say, export a test sequence and you don't want to export everything or you don't want to necessarily draw the whole world, well, you can, you can uncheck what you don't want. Uh, it's also a way if you're trying to produce special effects or trying to produce a movie that doesn't actually show certain elements, well, then, you know, go in here and just turn off what you don't want. You can even turn off recorded objects as opposed to world objects, and that's a, that's a great way to do it. Uh, so, you know, I, I haven't had a lot of use for this personally, but I can see how in some of the films that I've been working on that I might actually want to use some of this at some point. So I wanted to point it out to you as being something this is useful. Uh, the layoff settings, the shot ID overlay will show the name of the shot and will show like certain timing information and things like that. And it will look sort of like cool if you wanted to do that. But it's also useful um, if you are doing things like um, if you're if you're doing a large project and you want to do the equivalent of dailies or, or weeklies and you're sharing with a group or you've got a collaboration going on, this is a great way you can put the shot ID overlay on and it'll show the timing and it'll show the shot name so that people know what they're looking at when they see the film. And uh, that's something that I would recommend for group collaboration efforts. Turn on your shot ID overlay, and that way the other people who are seeing it can correspond it to or correlate it to what they're seeing on their systems. Uh, the rest of these I would tend to leave at the default, although, again, I would, uh, um, I would experiment. Clear decals at start of layoff. That's a useful one, actually. Turning that on will, will if you've been doing work in the game engine and there's, there's like, uh, you know, bullet holes on the wall or blood spatters or something like that, and you just want to make sure you start from a clean slate, check that because it'll, it'll execute the clear decals command and, and eliminate any, uh, any temporary decals that have gone up uh, while you were working. Uh, if you want to export your film at a frame rate other than the default that you set when you picked your when you created your project, this is where you can do it. So you can say override frame rate, and I could set it to 60 frames per second. Uh, again, override shutter speed. I wouldn't mess with that unless you know what you're doing. Um, experiment, learn what you're doing, uh, and have some fun with it. But in general, you shouldn't need to override uh, your shutter speed. Um, stereoscopic. This is one that I think is potentially interesting. Uh, I haven't played with it myself, but uh, if you are wanting to render 3D stuff, this is where you play with it. So you can like render stereoscopic uh, uh, images so that people who are looking at it with 3D glasses, in theory, I guess, can see the movie in 3D. I've never experimented with it, but um, you know, give it a, give it a shot. See what you think. Uh, and the post render commands, 99.9% uh, .9 of people aren't going to uh, need to mess with this. But if you want to do any post processing, some automated post processing of your films, this is where you're going to do it. You can you can tell it to execute commands in the shell uh, and do things on your system after processing is done. Uh, again, I don't think most people are going to need to do that, but uh, it certainly is useful uh, if you want to, say, run a batch file or have it do something. Um, you know, after you're completed, maybe have it automatically stitched together an image sequence or something like that. Uh, again, in a future tip of the day, I'm going to take you through the entire rendering process using virtual dub and some other software so I can show you what it looks like to render a film without using source filmmakers uh, in game or in in system uh, movie uh, rendering codecs and so forth. Uh, and I think that might actually be really useful to some people um, who want to uh, be able to do some post processing that Source Filmmaker doesn't support. So I hope that this was useful. A little tour through the uh, uh, through the rendering settings uh, panel. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, that is your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day, number 52. I have been your host, Jimmer Linz, and I look forward to seeing you next week with another Tip of the Day. And, uh, yeah, in the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend and enjoy using Source Filmmaker.